Developing Evaluation Instruments to Improve Your Instructional Design, Part 2, Pre- and Post-Test. Aloha! I'm Dr. Katherine P. Fulford, Professor of Learning Design and Technology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I would like to provide a special thanks to all those faculty who contributed content. This is a five-part video series, and this is Part 2, Pre- and Post-Test. Pre- and Post-Test. This method of evaluation is the most thorough for formative evaluation. Starting with a pretest, then within your instruction, an embedded test, and then a post-test. See the links for more details, tips, and examples. Pre-embedded and post-test. This is an assessment at the entry, the middle, and the exit points. What you're doing is looking at a learning change or a change in behaviors and attitudes. It can also be performance-based. You are testing the same objective, which is parallel in the pre, embedded, and post-test. Why use a pre-post design? Use a pre and post design if you want to know what improvement can be credited to the instruction or training specifically. You use an embedded test to ensure that what was taught in a particular section of the instruction worked. Then you use a post only if you only want to know if the participants can demonstrate the knowledge or skills by the end. Developing your testing instruments. You want to start with a thorough instructional analysis. Looking at verbal information, you would use a cluster analysis, intellectual skills, a skills hierarchy, psychomotor skills, steps with subskills, attitudes, something like the ARCS model hierarchy. For more information on instructional analysis, you can watch this video. You want to develop objectives from the skills in the analysis and consider the domain of learning. Cognitive, which are intellectual skills, cognitive strategies, or verbal information. The affective domain, attention, relevance, confidence, satisfaction, or volition. Or psychomotor, physical movement, coordination, motor skill areas. For more information on design objectives, you can watch this video. In developing your testing instruments, you want to develop those instruments to the appropriate domain. Examples of types of test. There are written tests, multiple choice, matching, short answer, true false, although true false are not preferred. This is a very efficient way to test whether your instruction works. You might also use essays, projects, games, surveys, performance tests, either in person, video, or audio. And there are also types of more complex evaluation to use on some of these, like rubrics, rating scales, or checklist. Here are some tips for designing pre- and post-test. Make sure your assessment is appropriate as a pre- and post-test. For example, multiple choice, short answer, surveys, or performance might be the most efficient. Make sure that it matches your population, such as age, ability, background, and skill level in things like reading and math. You want to make sure it's not too easy or too difficult. Make sure that it measures what you intend to measure. This can be a real stumbling block. If you're looking at the affective domain, you don't want to test what they've learned. You want to test how their choices have changed. Assure that the pre- and post-test conditions are as similar as possible. They should be able to complete this in about 10 to 25 minutes. Be sure to write questions for each objective to make sure that you've covered everything you intended to cover. Know which domain you're testing. Make sure that the tests are representative of the content. Use an average difficulty level. Make sure that the questions are clearly written. You want to avoid any gender, cultural, and age bias in your questions. When writing parallel test items, the pre-embedded and post-test should be equivalent, though not the same. This is what parallel means. So they are equal in the domain, the objective, the difficulty, the length, and the type. But they can be different in the example, the scenario, the images, the order, or the format. Remember, you want to test the same objective, but avoid having them memorize the answers. 
Creating quality test questions. Use questions rather than completion items if possible. There's an example in the lower right hand corner. Make sure that the item is accurate and up to date. Address the desired cognitive level. That is, are you testing recall or application? Application allows you to test for more depth of learning. Write clearly using straightforward vocabulary and sentence structure. Do not create questions that require memorization of picky details. Again, go back and look at your objectives and make sure that you're covering them. Only include questions where clear answers were provided in the instruction. This is really important. Incorrect responses should be potentially plausible but clearly wrong. Avoid making up words or terms to confuse people. Interestingly, this has the reverse effect because often people that actually know the content might think they've missed something. Avoid conjunctions like and, but, except, or or. Again, this confuses things. Avoid negatively stated items, especially double negatives. Avoid using absolutes, such as always, only, all, or never. Most of the time you can make a case for an exception. Make items as concise and brief as possible. Be sure that each item is independent and not required as a condition for solving another item. Multiple choice tests should have one correct answer and three incorrect answers. Options should have plausible and attractive distractors that represent common errors. Avoid using the option of all of the above or none of the above. If you do decide to use this, make sure that you use some where this is the correct answer and some where it's not. Remember, tricky items might test their wits, but not the real objectives. Aloha and mahalo. Now it's time to watch our next video, Developing Evaluation Instruments to Improve Your Instructional Design, Part 3, Interviews and Focus Groups. You can also search YouTube for Katherine Fulford for more videos on instructional design and evaluation.